or should I say top of the morning and happy St. Patrick's Day. We are in Dublin, which is the best place to be for St. Patrick's Day. I love everyone's wearing green today, um, and our brochure is green today also. You'll notice a couple different announcements, and especially that we're coming up to Holy Week next week. So I don't know if you're able to, um, ushers are passing out a flyer. It tells about our Easter service happening, and Pastor Garrett's going to encourage you to take a flyer and hand it to a friend or hand it to a neighbor. Invite them to come to church. All of the Holy Week services are um, in the bulletin. Palm Sunday is already next week. And we have our lovely Peyton here is holding up a fish. What's the fish for? What, what do you do with the fish? You put money in it. Oh, you put coins in it. That's our, is it going to help people? Okay, it's our one great hour of sharing fish banks. We have a fish bank that you can put some coins in. We have envelopes in the pews, and this will help um, people all over the world with natural disasters, with medicine, with food, with clean water. Um, one great hour of sharing has been helping people for 75 years. So a little goes a long way. So even if you put a little in, all together, it makes a lot. Um, also wanted to say today we're having a special prayer time. We'll have two prayer warriors in the back of the church um, today. So if you'd like to meet for confidential prayer, they'll be there. I think it's Ewan and, and Sue. And, oh, Sue and Hank. I thought it was you, Ewan. Oh, sorry, it was Hank. Sorry. You, Ewan is always praying for you all. Ewan is always praying for you all, okay? Okay, so also, wait, for some reason, Peyton is also holding a fish that's holding the a pig that's holding the fish. And that's because, here, turn it this way. That's because we are so excited that uh, JKPC has been part of the St. Patrick's Day Festival yesterday and today it's happening. And we have our Irish pig jig booth, which is a great way to get people to come and have fun with us, check out our church, we give them a flyer, what the church is all about. And we're right across from the Irish dancing stage. So I, I, I made my a whole exercise ring yesterday just from clapping and dancing. So we have a tiny snippet of a seven-second clip. Can we show that, Jerry? <laughs> the best part of the whole festival. So... A wonderful way to connect with the community. So please, um, it's from it's happening. I think right from ten down to five o'clock today. Parking's tricky. I have some parking information if you want to know where to park. Um, but it's happening today, and we're right across from the booth. But now I think it's time to prepare our hearts for worship, and we have a beautiful prelude coming at us. Dear God, we thank you so much for this chance to gather, uh, to set aside all the, the worries, the concerns, and the events of the day, and just be open to you. And so we ask that your Holy Spirit would be a part of our worship through the music, uh, through the message, through the prayers, because it is only by you and, and your Spirit working within us and in our, within our church that we are able to do uh, what you call us to do. Uh, we need your strength, your wisdom, and uh, your love to really be all that you intended us to be. So may you speak deeply to our hearts 
and may we be open to your leading. We thank you for uh, the, the many blessings you give to us. So as we sing praises, uh, may it come from our heart and not just words that we see on the screen. And as we worship you, uh, may, may our hearts uh, be submissive to you. You who are the Lord of lords, the King of kings. So we give you ourselves and our worship today. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you.
Thanks so much. That was kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, at least I fun. Anyway, turn around. Let's pass the peace of Christ with a handshake, a high five, a hug. Tell everybody how glad you are. John, 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 come back here, come back here. Carolyn, come back here, come back here. Come back. All right, calling all kids. You came all the way Pacifica. Wow, it was a windy road. Good to see you. Hi, Alex. Where's Tony? Is Tony here? Tony's coming? Okay. Hi, I missed you. How are you? Good to see you. What happened? The seed grow? Grew? Wonderful. Awesome. Come on up. I can... Wonderful. It's springtime. Okay, I forgot to mention one thing. A, um, a huge um, food donation came in. It's on the counter. If anyone feels strong after church, I have a rolling cart. If you will help me roll that food into Fellowship Hall, there's a table against the wall. Uh, we'll see if the youth can help out, but just in case if anyone has a free hand, it'd be awesome. All right. Hey, kids, how are you? All right. Good to see you. Hi. Thank you for coming up here. I'm not going to put you on the spot, but what is your name? Cole? Thanks for coming up. That's awesome. Okay, so how many of you have a good friend? A best friend? Yeah? Do a lot of things with them? Yeah? Friends are fun. I, you're going to have sleepovers with your friend. Man, I just even saw my friend from high school um, the other day. We knew each other since we were 14 years old and we're still friends. That's a long time. Now, I usually don't sing up here. But today's message reminded me of a song. When I was a, a brownie, I never was a Girl Scout, I was a brownie, we learned a song called Make New Friends. So it's kind of cold, I usually do not sing, okay? Just, well, yeah, I do, but not up here, okay. All right, so will you guys help me with a song? This is a repeat after me song. Ready? Make new friends. And keep the old. One is silver, that's high, and the other's gold. Good, Dean. Let's try one together, okay? Is that too high, Dean? Can I sing it okay? Oh, nice. Okay, ready? Here we, here we go. Make new friends and keep the old. One is silver and the other's gold. The reason I like that song is because it reminds me we always can make new friends. Our, our friends that we already know, our dear, dear friends, but it's always good to meet new friends. So I wanted to can I put you down for one second. You know who I also think really liked making new friends? It was Jesus. Because we learn in the Bible, when he was first calling his followers, um, his disciples, and I like to call them his friends, he told them to follow him, okay? So they were fishermen, and say... They just maybe caught one or two fish that day. Okay, not too many. He said to them, if you follow me, I will make you fishers of men. Whoa. 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 Yeah, whoa, everyone. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so what does that mean, fishers of men? It doesn't mean I'm going to be putting this over you and go, gotcha. It means that... It means that when we are a friend to others, when we shine our light, when we give a smile, we give a hello, 
that's making a new friend. And so the more that we're out there and the more that we're visiting people and being the ones to make the friend, that's also helping God's kingdom to grow, okay? And one way, is a, a good example is at the festival. I have a, a couple of pictures. It was so much fun. We were right by the Irish dancing and lots of people came and it was kids, it was adults, it was teenagers without even like just kind of hanging out. Because we had this fun pig, pig jig going on, it was easy for them to join the fun. We all danced. We honestly got pretty competitive. Right, Casey and Alice? <laughs> so, um, and we also had brochures, but it was lots of fun. And the kids, watch this next picture. The kids would get so into it. Um, this per, this, I, I wish I had the video. They were like jumping and having fun. And even we saw some vacation Bible school kids. Where's the next picture? They were so excited to come and they saw us and the mom took a picture of us. So that a VBS family is also a new friend. So don't be afraid to make a new friend. And I think Jesus wants us to be a friend for all and to show them love, to show them kindness, and to show them respect, okay? So um, think about that when you see the fish or when you see the piggies like Peyton was holding. Know that we need to be a friend and when we are, we're being just like Jesus. Okay? All right, let's say a prayer before going to Sunday school. You ready for me? Here we go. Hands together. Father God, we thank you for this day. Help us to shine our lights. Help us to be a friend. Help us to share the love of Jesus in all we do and all we say. And everyone said a huge amen. All right, going to Sunday school. Middle school, high school goes to room D with PJ. Younger kids come with me to room A. All right, we can hold this. Here. Oh, my goodness. Look at you. Want to hold that? Wanna hold this you oh, you wanna hold okay here we go. I had a chance to go by the, the booth or uh, come by this this afternoon. Uh, it's it's great. So um, we want to move to a, a time of prayer. So if you have uh, anything that uh, you have as a praise or as a prayer, uh, this is a, the time to, to share that. So anybody? Um, microphone? Oh, do we need mics? <laughs> is it you? okay to use this? Okay. Okay, thank you. Oh, there's one over here, and then. Thank you. Oh, Peter, All right. <laughs> uh, okay. Hi, I'm Cindy Cook. Um, I want to say praises for the progress Alan is making. He's improving a lot and getting stronger. And we ask for continued prayers that that would continue, that he would continue to get stronger. And thank you so much for all the prayers and support we've been receiving. Mm. Anyone else? Oh. Uh, good morning, Vicki Wyant. Um, I would ask for continued prayers for Kathy Snowden and their family. Um, she came home. Um, she's got a little bit of extra care at home, and um, they're making her comfortable. Mm -hmm. Diana McIntyre, prayers for Tina Kritzer. Uh, as you know, she lost her brother uh, about a month ago. Well, I gather yesterday she lost her sister-in-law. So her brother lost his brother and his wife within a month. So prayers for that entire family, please. Last May, I think, I shared with the congregation that my brother um, John had been diagnosed with pretty grim uh, cancer diagnosis. And he's, you know, he's still alive, which is a praise right there. Um, we were, we didn't know that he would even make it through the summer. And he's been able, he's, he's, they've been able to get him some targeted chemotherapy that's been working. And um, 
he and his wife in August will become first time grandparents. Oh wow. And so just real her the mother Sarah and Peter. Peter came here for a while when he lived with Dave and I and um just prayers that um he lives to see that baby and that these these treatments continue to um keep him keep him afloat. He's doing pretty well. His name is John. Thank you. Uh, Laura, when when is the baby due again? And the baby's due in August. August is okay. Anyone else? All right. And um, want to say, uh, Don Strongman, Pastor Don, if you're watching, happy birthday to you as you, you celebrate. Hope you enjoy your day. And uh, yesterday he went uh, biking with a group in Davis. So I don't do biking for fun. I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm glad somebody enjoys that. And then... And this summer, he plans to take a, a trip in, in Europe for, I think, two or three weeks of biking. And so my idea of, of fun is like a bus or a boat, but uh, I don't know, that just sounds like too much work. But that's, that's uh, what you get. Um, so, all right. Well, let's, let's, oh, there's, yeah. Thanks. I'm, I'm Sue King or what? Yeah, I guess, I don't know if this is on. Um, Hank and I just got back from a wonderful road trip um, to Texas and back. Um, one of our stops was to see my ex-husband's um, father, who is 100 years old wow. and has just had a stroke. And I'd like to ask for prayers for that whole family. Um, my ex-husband, Tom, many of you know him, um, he is suffering with both prostate cancer and Alzheimer's. And his dad just had a stroke, and his sister um, just killed herself. And oh, so that's no. a lot, and that was about two weeks ago. Um, so that's a lot for one family to be handling. And um, the, the dad, who's going to be 101 next month, is doing surprisingly well for all the things that his family's going through. But I just, it's a lot for one family. And, and what's the dad's name? His name's Bob, Bob King. Bob, okay. All right. Well, let's pray together. Uh, dear God, we, we thank you for what you are doing uh, in, in our lives. And sometimes it's in big ways, sometimes it's small. Uh, sometimes we see dramatic change quickly, and other times it's, it takes a, a long time. And yet uh, you are there, you are faithful. We, we know that uh, each and every moment of our lives you are aware and, and that you care. And so we've you know, listed of some things that uh, are on our hearts, but there's a lot of other needs and, and joys that, that you know of, and we put them in your hands, or we say thank you for the blessings that, that you give, and uh, thank you for things like pig races, and, uh, you know, laughter, and for the kids, and thank you for the people who are, are willing to, to help with our children and our youth. Uh, bless them because that's such a, a crucial time and may you help to uh, be with us whether we are raising children that are young or all grown up. It's, we're always still parents and always concerned and so we ha ask you to continue to strengthen us with, with your love and endurance. We thank you that uh, Ellen is improving so we pray that that would continue. And we pray for Kathy Snowden and that you would also be with Rick as uh, they deal with her treatment. And uh, may she in some wonderful way sense your presence even in the midst of uh, the, the difficulty and, and, and the, the struggle. And we pray for, for Tina and the whole family as they've had a series of losses and recently the sister-in-law. So be with, be with Tina, Tina, the family, and all those that are impacted. We thank you that uh, John's cancer treatments are, are going well and, and we do pray that that would continue and uh, our uh, specific prayer is that you would keep uh, him going strong so he can enjoy being a grandparent in August. And may uh, he and the whole family experience that joy. 
So we, we pray for that. And uh, we pray for um, the King family, uh, for Tom and for Bob and for the sister. I mean, that's, there's so much um, pain and tragedy and hurt there. So I pray that you be with them, surround them with, with your presence. Uh, be with Sue as she is there to help support. And may you bless all of those, all of us, who may be helping friends or family through difficult times. Uh, may you give us the ability to, to just be present in their lives and in some way to bring your, your love and your hope into those situations as well. And so we ask that you would be with us in places that we, we need you and we know that it's beyond us. And so we, we pray for not only ourselves but our, our church as we're in the midst of, you know, continuing forward, and we pray that you bless the uh, uh, PNC, that you'd bless uh, the booth today at uh, the festival, and that you would also be with uh, the preschools that are trying to get licensed or, or fully uh, licensed to do what they want to do, and we know that a lot of that's outside of our hands, definitely, but we put it in your hands and ask that you would help to uh, bring that to a quick uh, conclusion. And so we give you our, ourselves, and we know that uh, you are there and that you care. And each day, uh, you, you bring your blessing. And so as we uh, do pray the Lord's Prayer, uh, part of that prayer is that, uh, you know, your kingdom come, your will be done. And, and that's kind of a difficult thing because we have our agendas, we have our hopes, and to say, well, God, not what we want, but what you want uh, is uh, more difficult. It's easier to say it than to do it. And so we ask that in everything in our lives, that in, again, in little ways and in big ways, we would try to follow you and where you are leading. So now hear us as we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
So following in this theme, I'm going to ask uh, Stan to come up and, and read the scripture for the morning. Good morning. Please listen to God's word in Matthew 4, verses 18 to 20. Jesus calls his disciples. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. This ends my reading of the scripture. Thank you, Stan. So we're continuing, uh, and this is the uh, last one of my series called Reset. Yeah. And so last week, or last time I preached, uh, I talked about how the reset involves the whole church, that in John 17, uh, Jesus prays for the believers, uh, the disciples, but also for us that we would uh, be unified. And, and so we talked about what that means to be uh, unified, and then in order that the people or the world will know that I am who I am, that our unity uh, shows the world that, you know, Jesus is who he said he was, so that our unity is really important. But, uh, you know, the second part about kind of impacting the world is what I want to look at today, because as uh, Stan just read, Jesus says, uh, follow me. And just Jesus called out, come, follow me, and I'll show you how to fish uh, for people. So when Jesus says, come, follow me, he is inviting us to what? Fishing, yeah. Okay, it's, yeah, come, follow me, and I'll show you how to fish uh, for people. So I'm going to call this uh, message uh, Fishing 101. And uh, part of that is because... It's his whole imagery there is, you know, come follow me and we'll fish together. But you may be thinking, well, is, is Garrett qualified to, to talk about fishing? What does he know? Well, what, one trip uh, that I was on uh, came back with seven tuna and eight yellowtail. And that was, uh, that was one of the highlights. I usually don't catch that much. Uh, but, uh, you know, that was, that was a, a great trip. So I want to say when I'm talking about fishing... I'm talking about deep sea fishing, not the, you know, elegant, artistic, like fly fishing or other kind, but, uh, you know, deep sea, it, it's all different kinds. So the imagery and the things I'm sharing have to do with, uh, you know, going after things like uh, tuna and albacore and some of the great adventures or memories I have growing up all have to come around fishing. So fishing 101, usually you're like, okay, let's look at some of the main points. And the first one is you got to remember why you're on a boat. Because usually when you, you go on a boat, you're with people that you, you know, and you know, you're there, you have fun, you're, you're out uh, in enjoying the, the sun. And then on a lot of these boats, there's good stuff to eat. And Growing up, one of the things that I enjoyed was going into the galley and getting a cheeseburger. And it was, you know, it wasn't fancy, but boy, it, it tasted so great. But why are we on the boat? To fish. Good. Okay, good. All right. We are there to, to fish. And so as, as a church, what does Jesus call us uh, to do, you know, as a, as a group? And personally, and again, goes back to, uh, you know, fishing for people, that that is part of our call. And at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, it says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So the first point is, you know, why are we here? And so part of why we're here is unity and enjoy one another's company, uh, to enjoy, you know, worship and, and eating and, you know, getting over to Fellowship Hall and getting some goodies. But that's only part of it, right? Because if 
we are called to fulfill this, you know, as a church, it doesn't end just on a Sunday morning after you've had your coffee or your pastry. It's really about, well, we are called to, to go and with Jesus and to fish for people uh, to go and, and help people come to know Jesus. So you've got to remember that, that as a church, that's part of our call. A uh, second thing is you've got to go where, where the fish are. And so when you get on one of these boats and we're going for tuna, do we stay there in the harbor next to the dock where it's safe and nice and get to go home quick? No, you, where, where do you go? You've you got to get out of the harbor and, and go to where the fish are. And sometimes it's close, uh, like a 40-minute boat ride. Sometimes it's hours, four or five hours. So you leave at 2 in the morning. You're traveling, and it takes you that long to get to where the, the, the tuna are. And in the same way, you know, the church, if you're trying to f find people or uh, be around people who don't know Jesus, are you going to find them here? Typically not. Um, if you're just here looking for, for people, that's not the best place to go. Maybe on occasion, but typically you have to go where, where people are out <laughs> in the world. So as they gather, and it could be, you know, park, neighborhood, school, uh, your, your work, uh, your neighborhood, but uh, they're out there. And so even today, you know, one of the things that we're trying to do is be, be present there in the midst of, you know, a lot of other people, a lot of other interests, but just say, hey, John Knox is a place that you might be interested in. And hey, come and look at the pig races, you know. And, hey, and if pigs draw people in, praise the Lord, you know. Because if you're just trying to, hey, come and take it, they're going, nah, but pigs, oh, okay, we'll, we'll come and take a look at that. So it is fun. It's fun to be a part of uh, a, a church or a booth that people are, are interested in. But the point is that uh, the fish aren't in, in the harbor. And the fish, and the people who don't know Jesus, they're not here. They're, they're out there. So you've got to go where they are. And number three, you have to know what the fish want. Um, there's different kinds of lures. And if you're going for tuna, um, you might recognize so a frog, a minnow, a uh, worm. Is that for deep sea, sea water, salt water? No, if you're fishermen, it's like, no, that's, that's fresh water, you know. Maybe bass or other things, but you know there are no frogs or, or earthworms in, in the deep sea. So you're you're looking if you want to go for tuna or albacore, uh, you're you're getting you know big jigs, um, metal, colorful that look like either fish or squid uh, that the tuna will come and be attracted to. So very different. And even when we're out fishing for tuna. We, we put out different lines, one with uh, blue, one with pink, one with, you know, green and, and blue, and one with white, because we don't know what color the, the tuna are biting. So once we get a tuna, and oh, it took the purple one. Okay, let's put out a couple purple and see if we can get more. So even within the lures, you have to make decisions. Are they going for the strict... Just the, the metal lure, or are they looking at the feather lure? And the same thing with uh, trying to uh, fish for, for people, to, to invite people in, to get people to know Jesus. You have to know what they want. So that you don't start with, hey, why don't you come to a prayer meeting? Uh, why don't you, maybe a Bible study, or, or come here, our pastor preach. It's like, no, don't start there, because that's probably not what they're interested in. You might be interested in it, but are, are they interested in it? So you have to know, you know, what they might like. And so typically, you know, food or having a party or, you know, the baseball season's coming up and the Giants are looking decent. So, you know, you know the people who you might want to connect with. What do they enjoy doing? And, uh, you know, these people, I don't know if you can tell, but, you know, they're holding up a glass of wine, but I know some of you like 
I like wine, I like beer. Okay, well, go with the beer. Or if uh, you have a, a craft that you enjoy doing, or, or there's something that a hobby or an interest that you have that is connected with other people, use, use that. But start with what they might enjoy, uh, not necessarily what you want them to do, because it starts with them. Because uh, we can't tell the fish, okay, we're going to put out this lure, and you have to bite it. You know, you have to take that one. It's like, no, you put it out there and see what they take. Uh, fourth thing, and fishermen know this backwards and forward, it, it takes patience. It takes time. And we are not always patient people. And that's why some of you who are not very patient or can't sit still, you hate fishing. You can think of nothing worse. I mean, that sounds like hell to you to, to sit and, uh, you know, wait for a fish to, to do something. Uh, but it, part of fishing is, you know, you can't go and jump in the water and get a fish and put it on your, your hook. You have to kind of wait and, you know, entice and try to get the fish to come and, and take the bait. So one of uh, my... Uh, memories is we uh, chartered a boat with about 16, 17 friends that we've known, and it was great. You know, we get on the boat, and we're all excited, and it's like, oh, this is going to be so much fun. So we traveled out about, uh, I think, three or four hours. The sun comes up, and then you put your lines out. And so the way it works is you put out your lures, and then you just... Uh, travel around trying to figure out where the fish are. So the day before, you kind of see where the rest of the fleet is because someone is bound to know where the fish are. So you kind of start with somewhere around the, the fleet and then you uh, go out. And so you put your lines in and we're like excited. It's like, okay, let's get going. And then hour number two, you're kind of going, well, this is taking a while. And then hour four, you know, there's no bites. It's like, oh, this isn't looking good. Hour six, the captain says, you know, sorry, guys. You know, we, we need to head back. Uh, you know, because the day's getting short and we don't have all the fuel in the world. Sorry. How many fish? Zero fish on, on the boat. And I think, how could this day get any worse? Well, as we're heading back, the deckhand comes... There's a problem with the engine. We can only go about three-quarters speed. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. Not only are we shut out, now it's taking us forever to get in. But he said, you know, since we're going so slow, if you want to put a line out, uh, you can do that because we're kind of almost trolling speed. So uh, some of us uh, put, put a line out, and um, it there were four of us and then, you know, two of us, then one of us. Because I was not going to go back in with no fish. And so even if I have to, you know, be out there. So, you know, people are kind of eating in the galley looking at stupid Garrett out there in the back. And so my, my line's out there. And then, you know, I, I get a, get a hookup. And it's like, oh, I got a fish. And, and so everybody comes out, puts their bait in and uh, brought it in, but it was just the one tuna. So it was like just a solitary tuna that we just happened to luck into, but I got it. So um, <laughs> uh, we, we started off again, and you know, two or three people uh, in the back, and then after half hour, you know, two of the other guys went in. So again, it's just me out there. And you know, about 45 minutes, again, kind of tootling back in, uh, you know, get a, get a hookup. And then, you know, <laughs> this time, you know, only a couple people came out because they go, well, it was just a luck last time. It's going to be just one fish this time. So a couple guys put their bait in and then got hooked up too. So, and then all of a sudden the deckhand's throwing out bait. And then there's tuna everywhere. And, you know, everybody's catching tuna. And, you know, after I caught three... I hooked up my fourth, you know, I asked, you know, has anybody else not got a tuna yet? And so one guy, I said, here, you know, you, you bring in this one, because I got three already, and, 
you know, I didn't want anybody going back with, with no tuna, because that's, that's the worst thing for fishermen to go back. Everybody else on the boat caught one except me. So everybody got one, and it was just, it was an amazing day. And so it was party time all the way back in. Uh, but the, the, the point is just I didn't want to give up. You know, I, I felt like I had to keep trying. So even just sticking out there and, and not knowing if I'd catch anything, but I did. And, and the whole boat ended up catching a ton. And we were the high boat of the fleet. And it was interesting. Uh, the tuna had moved from way out to, to really closer. So the next day, the whole fleet uh, came closer where all the tuna were, but we just happened to find that the tuna had, had migrated in. Uh, so not only did we impact that day, but uh, for the fish, you know, the, the next week, they kind of knew where the, the tuna were. And so with, with us, it sometimes takes time. Uh, to make friends, uh, sometimes a really long time, but it, it's important uh, to try to, you know, get to know people outside of the church, people who don't yet know Jesus. They may be very different, and, and it's, and I want to say the main goal is just to be a friend. Uh, don't make your goal to get them to church. You know, God will take care of that. Your goal is just to make friends with people who may not know who Jesus is or know his love. And so whether it's at a sporting event, over coffee, over, over food or whatever, because, you know, we'll, we'll try to do things here at the church uh, that can be more outreach, but if you don't know anybody to invite who doesn't know Jesus, if it's just us, you know, then we're, we're not, doing the right kind of fishing. So uh, it's important to, to know it's, it's a process. And again, remember the, the purpose of the trip. When you go fishing, what's the, the main question that people ask? Yeah, what did you catch? How many fish did you catch? And so that, that question was like, that tuna trip, how many fish did you catch? I just did not want to say zero. Uh, it was just, it's too painful. And... Um, Jesus is asking, you know, are you helping people uh, to know that I love them? Uh, I, I think when he says, come follow me and I'll teach you how to fish for people, uh, that's just not a nice, fun story. And he, he says, you follow me and, and you'll connect with people who don't know me, who need to know me. And so that's you know, part of what I want to remind you of the purpose of our gathering is not just us that it's, it's us moving out. So where do I start? And this, I shared this a couple weeks ago, but it's always good to remind. You ask yourself, how many friends do I have that don't know Jesus or may not go to church? Because uh, it's incomplete to enjoy our time together as JKPC, but if we're not in some way reaching out, um, and I'm at this point saying you personally getting to know other people, then it's incomplete. So the, uh, the mission is build a friend, make a friend um, who doesn't know Jesus. The goal or, or um, the assignment is not get them to church. The assignment is just make a friend. Get to know them, listen to them. And, and the more different they are, the better. Because I think our viewpoints need to in, in large and, and not get smaller. And we, we get that only by talking with people who are different. So I think it involves prayer. Uh, so, so be praying for yourself. Be praying for the church. Uh, and we do have uh, Easter coming up. So if you know someone who might be interested, you know, you can ask them. And uh, made these cards. Uh, and so... If you know someone who might be interested, now don't go to someone who you don't know and say, hey, you know, come to church. It's for people who you personally know that might be interested. And if you don't have someone that you could give this to, you know, put it on your uh, refrigerator or 
uh, on your bathroom mirror or on your, next to your computer, wherever you spend time, and just pray, you know, God, would you help me to make a friend? Would you help our, our church to be able to find people who may not know you? And so if you're praying, that's, that's an important thing. So, you know, pray every day until Easter. You know, that's just two weeks from now. So, you know, pray this, because this is the future of our church. Um, if, if we're not serious about trying to follow Jesus in this mission, uh, you know, then... I, you know, then I don't think we, we have the future that God intends. So this is serious stuff. It's very important that uh, we, we do this. And, um, and, yeah, and for us too, you know, just to enjoy time. But as we have fun together, let's see if we can find others to invite in. And I'm asking, if you have something to share, bring it on Easter because we can come and have Easter and then go and, and eat some goodies and, uh, you know, because if, if you know someone who might be interested, like I have some friends that live in Pleasanton, and I go, hey, you should come. We're going to have a great service. And there's goodies afterwards. You know, and it's, so the, the wife might be interested in the worship, and the husband goes, well, if you have food, okay, I'll be there. Um, so bring, bring something good that you might want to share. And the, the final thing I'll say is you never know what the day will bring. You know, when you go out fishing, you don't know if it's going to be a good day, if it's going to be a bad day, uh, but you go out. And uh, my final story has to do when I was actually 13 years old, went out on a half-day boat out of San Diego. I grew up in San Diego, and um, it's a half-day boat. You're out there for about five hours, and we we're about done. End of the day, captain says, okay, that's it. You know, I caught two small fish, but nothing great, and so, like me, I always kind of wait to the last minute. The boat starts moving. Okay, I guess I should reel it up. And I start, you know, reeling it in. And then all of a sudden, you know, I got a bite. And um, one of the deckhands said, well, are you snagged on something? Because it wasn't moving very much. And he goes, no, I, I guess it's a fish. And so I struggled with it for a while. And... Uh, uh, the deckhand again came by, because I'm just 13. And he's like, you know, so we had to share it, because I could only do so, so much, because it was a, a bigger fish. And because they were trying to go home, they started following this, this fish, because it was so big, and it rotated between me and, and two adults, trying to get this thing up. And, uh, and when it came, it came to the surface, it was, it was a big fish. And... Uh, you know, I don't have a, uh, it was, it was, it was a um, black sea bass, and it was 146 pounds. And uh, you say, oh, well, and as, and as a teenager, it was bigger than I was. And you say, well, how do we know that you're not just giving us a fish story? Because uh, I, I know I have a picture somewhere, but I couldn't find it. But I do have something um, to kind of let you know how big it was, because, um, this is the head of, of the black sea bass. So um, today, I think it's illegal to catch these things, but back in you know, the 70s, it, it was not. And uh, so we had taken it in to get it filleted. And, and my dad goes, you know, we should probably keep something. So they kept the head. And uh, <laughs> so here it is. Uh, I, I did actually catch it. And it sits in a box in the garage. Because <laughs> um, uh, my wife would not, does not want to hang this up in the house. She says it'll scare the kids, the grandkids. People don't want to see it. So it sits in the garage until I can get a man cave somewhere. But... Uh, um, so y you, you never know what life will hold. And so may God be with us all. And can I have the final slide? As, as we, you know, go fishing, uh, make some friends. Um, yeah, there we go. 
So God bless you, God bless me as, as we, we do this, as we follow Jesus. So I hope, you know, it's encouragement. <laughs> Plus, it gives me a chance to kind of, you know, brag a little bit and kind of bring out the fishing poles and look at this. It's like, you know, because this poor guy sits in the garage in a box. Uh, should be prominently put, like, as people come in the house, whoa, look at that. But... Uh, not going to happen with my present wife and my only wife. So, if whatever you know, happy wife, happy life. So, um, so you get to see it. But uh, there you go. It's and then I look forward to what God's going to do. I don't know how God will will work in us, but I'm just trying to clarify, you know, that for us to move ahead in a wonderful way, that we've we've got to find ways to reach out and to engage uh, in, in our world. And, uh, hey, if you, and if you go real fishing, let me know. I know. Uh, but I'm terrible fly fishing. So there, let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for your word and your invitation to us. So I pray that you would uh, be with us as a church. Um, help us as we move towards Easter to be alert to maybe open doors, uh, conversations, or people that you might be trying to reach. And so uh, we, we know that you love the world and that you really want people to know of your love for them. And may we be a part of that fishing expedition. So bless us, I pray, today and in the days ahead. Uh, fill us with hope, with patience, and with love. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you.
great, Dean. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much. Well, I pray that uh, God would be with you and, and bless you as we are uh, together. And, you know, we pray, God, would you use us anytime, anywhere. So that's my hope for myself and for you, that, that you would just go and be a blessing uh, to people. And that God, you'd be open to God using you, uh, maybe in surprising ways. So if you're watching online, thank you for joining us. Uh, you that are here, thank you for coming. I hope you enjoy uh, our uh, fellowship time. But now hear this blessing, this benediction. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. And may the Lord be with you as you make new friends in the name of Christ. And may God do more than we could ask or even imagine. In the name of God the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May God bless you all each and every day. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks for coming.